Hey everybody! Now, you might remember last week I showed you um, the new notification ringtone on my phone. Well, this past week I was in the middle of a, <clears throat> let's just say intimate situation. And while the ringtone did not go off, I kind of, after we were done enjoying ourselves, this is not bragging by the way, it, it because this is actually a rare occurrence for me. After we were done enjoying ourselves, I picked up my phone and I said, you know what, I'm actually kind of glad that my phone didn't actually make any noise because if we were like in the middle of a uh, moment of intimacy and suddenly this happened, I think that might have ruined the moment a little bit. Just like, oh, suddenly I'm not so turned on anymore. But uh, today I was really kind of feeling... Uh, I guess I was doing penance for all the the good times I've been having this past week. Because uh, I just got sidelined by the horrible sick headache and I was just lying around my room for hours. And I was, today was just a wasted day. Um... Usually I do a whole lot of shopping. I only got a little bit done. But, you know, since I don't live in the middle of freaking nowhere anymore, it's not such a big deal. I can just do the rest of my shopping tomorrow. But, yeah, I just spent, sat around, mainly watching old episodes of uh, news radio again. And uh, I really need to get season three now, because I have season one and two on that box set that I bought. But I need to get season three because I'm just remembering that some of the funniest bits are in season three. Like the one where uh, Beth is talking about the different meanings of the different words for pretty. The different synonyms for pretty. By the way, Vicki Lewis, an extremely underrated talent. And also the one where... <laughs> I was just watching the YouTube clip of that today. The... Uh, the commercial that Bill does for rocket fuel malt liquor with all the fake urban lingo that Catherine gives to him. It's, I, like, I went online and I just, I was just reading the transcript and I, I was just, like, in tears of laughter just remembering this. That might have been, that might be the funniest moment of that entire show. And uh, rest in peace, uh, not Bill McNeil, that's the character name. Uh, Phil Hartman. Uh, something else I wanted to say about... Uh, oh, yes. Let's talk generations for a bit. There's a, a, a slightly more serious note. Everyone is just always saying, Oh, I'm a baby boomer. I'm Generation X. I'm Generation Y. I'm Generation this. I'm Generation that. And uh, I'm not really Generation anything, as far as I know. I guess I kind of looked it up online because there's a supposedly, you know dividing lines, and I guess that makes me Generation X, but I don't, I don't relate to, I don't identify with any particular generation. It might be because I don't really relate well to people my own age, and part of the reason was for that is I kind of, um, I kind of matured faster than people my own age. Part of it is, you know, people are always just, they say that, uh, music of your teens is the music you most relate to. Well, the music from my teen sucked! And I think part of the reason is that is that I think it sucks so bad is because I was conscious of popular music from a very early age. Most people don't get into music until they're in their teens, but I just remember when I was like three years old, I was already like listening to songs on the radio and really getting into them. So, my musical taste tends to be of someone 15, 20 years older than I am. And the other thing was, I remember when my friend uh, Nicholas, not his real name, and I turned 13, we had this pact where we said, okay, our ages end in the suffix teen now, so we're going to be grown up, we're going to be men. We're not going to watch cartoons anymore. And we pretty much stuck to that because uh, I just kind of cut off just cartoons and stuff and 
let me tell you, I don't really, re it wasn't really until, I guess, 88, 89, when The Simpsons came out that I started watching cartoons again. But, you know, I watch cartoons from that period, and I think, yeah, I, I didn't miss anything. It's, uh, everyone's always talking about, ooh, blah, 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 Transformers, blah, 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 G.I. Joe, blah, 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 Gem, and it, it all just flies over my head. But, you know, I go back and watch that, and I said, this is, this is crap. I mean, you know, even compared to, say, stuff that I watched when I was really young, like, you know, The Funky Phantom or Dino Mutt and Blue Falcon, it still sucks. Because, you know, as bad as Captain Caveman was, it wasn't trying to sell you anything. It wasn't just, you know, marketing for a product. It was, mind you, it was just hack work that was just made to put more crap out on the air. But it wasn't just product-driven. And I think that's the point I'm trying to make here. But, <clears throat> yeah, I think that kind of explains why this whole generation thing has just kind of flown right past me. I, I don't, I don't, I don't mesh with it. But I was talking about that with my friend John, friend of the show, John Kenny. And he said, well, it's all basically just, you know, marketing anyway. Well, not really marketing, but, you know, it's, it's just, you know, stuff that people in the press just do to, like, have, you know, B stories whenever they don't have, whenever it's a slow news day. And he's right, because, you know, the, the whole generation construct thing is kind of, you know, artificial anyway. So, yeah, well, that's, that's my rant for the week, but, you know, I don't have anything to taste, but it's okay, because I have something better than Asian soft drinks and German candy. I have laser discs, woo! Because I went to Amoeba Music uh, this, well, not weekend, but my weekend, and uh, I went through the clearance bin and just pretty much doubled my laser disc collection because they just had all these classic movies for really cheap, and uh, I just said, you know what? There's all these movies that I love and don't own a copy of, or that I've heard about for years and have never actually seen. So, you know, I had to, I had to do, I had to just, I mean, uh, they have this uh, thing in the clearance at Amoeba where it's, you buy three items and you get the fourth free. So it's eight laser discs for $6. That's something, you know, for a cheap date like me, that's something really worthwhile. And these are some really good movies. It's like, here I've got Auntie Mame, the original with um, Rosalind Russell. Uh, I, I actually really do love this movie. And uh, it, it, just in time, because the new one with Tilda Swinton is coming out soon. And I, I'm actually cautiously optimistic for that, because uh, A, I like Tilda Swinton, and B, this is already an adapted work. I mean, this is this is like the original film version, but it's based on a novel, so... And they say that they're going to, like, go based on the novel, which can be good, can be bad, because the... I'm thinking the Tim Burton, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory kind of went, eh. It's, it's not beaten the original, the original movie version in mind, but of course I have huge nostalgia for the original, the Gene Wilder version. Uh, and, yeah, the other thing about... A couple things about this... This might be, like, well, it's San Francisco anyway, but it's just, like, the most gayest thing I'd ever seen because it's just, like, anti-mame, and then I flip past it, and there's the women behind it, which also has Rosalind Russell, and, um, for the record, and controversial opinion time, I really dislike the women intensely. It's, like, uh, it, it's just... I, I watch that movie and I think, oh my god, feminism can't come quick enough. Simone Bo de Beauvoir, where are you when we need you? And, uh, like, the, the defenders of the movie will say, oh, but it was written by a woman. Uh, yeah, but it was still produced and directed by men. It's just like, men were in every other aspect of that making of that movie, and I'm sure they, like, took Claire Booth loose aside and was just like, yeah, could you make it bitchier and cattier, please? It's just... Yeah, I, I do not care for that movie at all. Uh, oh, the, the last thing about this, the last thing I'll say about Auntie Mae was I was going through the clearance videotapes earlier and I found the Lucille Ball meme as well. And I, I, I just like took one look at it and said, 
No. I'm not doing Movie Explorer anymore, so there's no need for me to torment myself with this way. I'm going to watch the good version from now on. Anyway, and, and here we have Bringing Up Baby, one of my favorite movies of all time. I love this movie so much. Katherine Hepburn and Cary Grant. If you haven't seen this movie, go out and watch it. I swear you will enjoy it. It's I love that movie so freaking much. And here's the only one of this for that I've actually watched. Um, the Palm Beach Story. The Preston Sturgis movie with like a strip of Gene Shallot down there inappropriately. <laughs> but... Yeah, it's, uh, I've never seen a Preston Sturgis movie before, but yeah, I watched this and I was thinking, wow, this, this is kind of low on the plausibility scale, but I don't care because it's got freaking Claudette Colbert in it, and I love her, and, uh, Rudy Valley's in this, and, uh, he wears, like, a series, I, there's this running gag, running gag about the pulse spectacles that he wears. So I, I, I kind of, like, am envious about that. And, of course, he gets a song to sing, because you're going to have Rudy Valley in your film. you got to let him sing. It's kind of, it's kind of like, you know, uh, Doris Day and uh, The Man Who Knew Too Much. And uh, here's one that I've been wanting to get for a while, House Calls. It's the reason I got it now and not earlier was because um, this is the first playable copy of this movie that I've found. That's the thing that I found out about Laserdiscs is you really have to look at them and examine them very carefully when you first get them because, again, like Palm Beach Story, it was playable throughout until you got to the bonus track, which is the theatrical trailer. And th that's right when it went into Laser Lock, but... But fortunately, the entire movie itself is watchable. But, <clears throat> but yeah, House Calls is just like the, the cast of this. It's Walter Matthau, Glenda Jackson, Art Carney, Richard Benjamin, Candace Azera. I love all those people. And I, I'd heard about this movie for years, so it was just like, you know. I, actually, I think I might have seen this on cable TV ages and ages and ages ago, but it's, it's been a long time. But, yeah, I remember enjoying this, so. So yeah, I had to get that, and that was another thing, was it was not this trip, it was actually uh, I, Rasputin's and I think Pleasant Hill. I saw a copy of this movie, I think it was Heartaches, with um, uh, Annie Potts and, uh, uh, I can't think of her name, she played uh, uh, Margot Kidder. Yeah, it, it's, I saw that movie and I said, oh, this looks interesting, and I looked it up online and it did look like something I might want to buy, but it was completely scratched up, unplayable. I was thinking, okay, I'm, 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 there's no reason no reason to buy this, not even at 95 cents. I mean, if my player won't even play it, there's no point in picking it up. And another Preston Sturgis movie, I haven't watched this one yet, The Miracle of Morgan's Creek, but everyone's always, like, saying what a great movie it is, so hopefully I'll enjoy that, and, uh... Yeah, I kind of got Glenn Jackson on the brain, because here's Sunday, Bloody Sunday. Another movie that I've heard about for years and never actually seen. It's also got Peter Finch and Murray Head in it. And, oh, oh look, Vivian Pickles is in this, too. And uh, another Catherine Hepburn, Cary Grant movie, Sylvia Scarlet. Uh, I haven't seen this one in a while. I remember it being good. This one's actually, I think, underrated, because... A lot of people say, oh, that's a crappy movie, but I, I liked it. I mean, it's certainly no bringing up baby, but I think it's worth watching. Give it a chance. And uh, finally, another kind of semi-legendary one, These Three, with uh, Miriam Hopkins and Merle Oberon. This is actually the censored version of The Children's Hour, which... Uh, oh, Walter Brennan's in this. Anyway... <laughs> One of my favorite character actors, anyway. Oh, and Joel McRae's in this, who was also in The, the Palm Beach Story. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, it's just, take Joel McRae out of the picture, and that's basically what the children's hour is. It's, it's you know, bitchy little uh, private school student accuses two of her teachers of being lesbians. But uh, it, it's something else in this one, because Joel McRae's involved. It's like someone's cheating on someone or allegedly i don't know the exact story but they they, they made uh, lillian hellman rewrite it so that it wasn't to take the lesbian aspect out of it and that's these three but later on we get we actually got an adaptation of the children's hour with uh, audrey hepburn and uh 
what's her face? Um, but yeah, Merle Oberon was in that too, but not playing the same part. Anyway, that's all I got for now, so uh, see you around.